Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you walked in. Join us once again. But for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad you all could be with us, as well as our online affiliates around the world. We're glad you all could join us as well. We're excited to welcome back Mr. Joseph Thomas, Jr. He's talking to us today about something a little different than we normally talk about. Normally when we have Mr. Thomas on the program, we're talking about the programming here at WYAD and his work in the community. But this year he's talking about his run from mayor of Yazoo City. We're going to talk to Mr. Thomas not only about his decision to run, but also what it's been like to be able to share his platform with you all, the voters, and what he wants you all to know as this race is going on this time. Mr. Thomas, glad to have you back on with us. Thank you, Cyrus. It's definitely an honor to be here on your program. Hey, Amen. The pleasure is definitely all mine. So let's go ahead and start with the, the big headline. Joseph Thomas, Jr., from mayor of Yazoo City. What made you decide, Mr. Thomas, that you wanted to run for, for mayor for 2022? Uh, with you. I, when 2018, I got made the runoff from the uh, last election, and I lost about 109 votes. I knew then that four years later that I was going to run. But this this uh opportunity in four years, you know. And and I stayed active in the community and and wanted to build a better mouse trap. You know, I didn't wanna just sit around on the sidelines and wait for four years. I wanted to earn people's vote and they see me out there and I'm steady working, even though I wasn't successful, I still wanted to be significant. Yeah. You, you bring up an interesting thing, Mr. Thomas, and you and I have not talked about this. So I want to let our radio audience know this. This is not something that was prepared, but Mr. Thomas agreed to come on the program. We're glad to have him uh, on this platform to share with you, uh, the listeners and the voters of Yazoo City, but also those joining us online. You know, that is one thing that is different, right? Because I, I have seen myself, and I'm sure our audience has as well, when some individuals run for public office, they do not win. They normally do kind of you know, fade into the background, right? What made you want to stay active uh, in, in Yazoo City and not only being visible but also being engaged? Well, Cyrus, it, you know, it's just in me. You know, I, I just love serving my community. I, if I can help someone along the way, then, I, I mean, it's just a feeling you can't, explain, you know, even with the radio station. I've been in other businesses, and I knew how important advertising was, and I knew that advertisement would be out-marketed. You know, I couldn't afford to advertise, even though I needed the services. And now I have the opportunity to help somebody else with something that I didn't have a chance with. And the same thing with the mail opportunity. I've had a lot of to whom much is given, much is required. And I, I like to give other people opportunities, you know, a true leader, it's not. I don't want people to look up to me. I want to make all of us leaders, but we're leaders together. You know, we're in this thing together, and I just see so much more for my community. Some people see half empty, but I see half full. And, I, and with that opportunity, I just know that we can do something special here in Yazoo City. One of the things I have seen myself, I'm sure anyone who has watched the news or, of course, um, you know, read the newspaper, Mr. Thomas, know that there is definitely work to be done all over the state of Mississippi. But Yazoo City has not been immune to some of the bigger problems we've been seeing. I want to talk about community involvement for a second because I think one of the big things that comes up is, you know, there has been, of course, some some tragedies in Yazoo City over the past few years, as there have been throughout the state and throughout the country for sure. What would you like voters? to know about what your platform will do when it comes to rebuilding trust in the community? You know, really, our officers, I will fight for our officers to get better pay here in Yazoo City. But also, I will require more from them. I would love for our officers to go to eat lunch with the children at McCoy Elementary or the children at Wolf Hall. So they have a relationship with the kids, and when they interact with them, it won't be the police. You have a better relationship with the children, you know. And another thing with crime prevention is that I learned that a lot of crime that we that we go through are from people that are past have committed other crimes, and a lot of that is because they are not able to go find work 
because of their past record and all that. And with the Thomas administration, we're going to work on expungements. And uh, because we want to make it where a man can feed his family. Because, you know, it, it's sad to say, crime pays. And, and a lot of people in our community have turned to that because they see that as being their best opportunity. And that's something that we must definitely address. And like I said, criminal justice reform in our community, that affects black and white, you know, expungements, uh, certificates of, of relief for, for people that committed a crime. Remember you was a teenager, you did something silly. But you're 35 or 40 years old now. You're trying to do better for you and your family, and that big one is still over you. You know, those are things that we can do as a community to help clean someone up. If you haven't committed a crime seven years after you have done it, then we should be. We should want to help you to get that off your record. Because me as the mayor, I'm trying to sell my city. It's hard for me to sell the city if 30, over 30 percent of the people have criminal background. Hmm. So that's something we must definitely address giving people answers because, like I said, most people that commit crimes go on to commit other crimes because that's their, they see that as their best opportunity. We want to change that perception and, and have job training here in the city right. so where we can actually prepare the people for the jobs that's actually in our community. And I believe once we get people to working, crime will go down because if you look in it well, where you have a high poverty rate, you also have a high crime rate. They call, they go hand in hand. And those are, those are the things we have to attack the root if we're trying to kill the tree. Mr. Thomas, you bring up something I noticed even in your platform. You talk about uh, in, enhancing the quality of life is one of the things you've been talking about. It's been interesting for me in, in having conversations with businesses uh, in and around Yazoo City, Yazoo County, uh, as well, of course, individuals who are from Yazoo City. Uh, how Many of them, of course, have stayed in Yazoo City, uh, been able to, to be active there, but others have left. Um, what would you like to see happen as mayor to be able to make make Yazoo City a place for people to be able to stay instead of feeling like they have to leave in order to do better? Well, one opportunity I see here in Yazoo City is home ownership. We have a lot of neighborhoods that gave a lot of people in the past, and it was an asset to people. And those communities, for some reason or another, maybe redlining or, or, you know, I really don't want to say, the neighborhood, but for some reason, those nice houses are no longer in good condition. Those areas there are areas that we should target and, you know, and attack those houses in those areas to to sustain our tax base because our schools and everything is determined by our ad valorum. And if we're going to create, if we're going to enhance the quality of life, yeah, we have to attack issues like only 46% of the people of Yazoo City are actually homeowners. See, that's the thing we have to address. When you own, when you have ownership, you you care more about it. Right now, we have too many people that that don't own their homes. You know, that's less than 50% of the people of Yazoo City. And I'm getting this information off the 2020 census. 46% of the people of Yazoo City are homeowners, and that should that number alone should make your head stand up on your head. You know what I'm saying? And also, health care is another thing that we must address our senior citizens. There's a lot of government programs that are out there that the people, because of their conditions, you know, when you think about it, according to the census, 42% of the people of Yazoo City are at or below the national poverty rate. And 8% of the children, of school age children in Yazoo City, are at or below the poverty rate. And those are the things that we have to address. If we're going to increase the, poverty, the quality of life, then we have to address poverty issues. Right. And that's something I have noticed, Mr. Thomas, and, you know, I have not even talked to you about this, but I do. You know, I'm one of these people who uh, I, I, you know, I like to stay engaged with individuals that I'm working with to keep up with what they're doing. I know you've been very active, uh, even in the past few years, about the very issues that you're now running on, uh, being able to make sure people are educated when it comes to, you know, maybe things about their record or making sure that they are able to get their um, their education uh, for those who do not have a GED, uh, being able to offer opportunities for them. Do you think that that's one of the connections you've been able to make in the community, Mr. Thomas, that these people, not only are you are you talking about these in the, in the election year, but these are things that they see you doing all the time anyway? 
But like we stated earlier, I don't want to wait till an election time to be visible in my community. I want it to change all the time. It's not just something that we're just trying to do right now. But to provide an opportunity for someone else, you know, because I've made a lot of mistakes. If people would just hold up every mistake I've made, then, you know, it would be hard. You probably couldn't see victory at the end for me. But I know it's a lot of people out there, good people, real good people that have made a bad choice or made a mistake, and we shouldn't write the end of their story because they made a mistake. And that's one thing that we want to implement here in the city. You know, one of our problems in our community, and I just, I'm running off course a little bit, but one of our problems in our community is we don't have love for each other. You know what I'm saying? If we're going to build a community, we got to learn to have love for each other. We live in a city. And tonight it's going to be 20 degrees outside, and we don't even have a heat shelter for the less fortunate. And you really don't have to be less fortunate because you can live in a mansion and your heat go out. Right. You got to leave there. You got to go somewhere and find some heat. You know, so we got to learn to just have compassion for each other. We got to get that village concept back. Where if, if I see you need it, I got it. I'm gonna let you have it. You know, you might not, and, uh, and, and you might not give it back to me if you see me with need it. But you know. Hey, that you have to ask the man no staff for that because right. I'm going to do what, what, you know, I'm supposed to do. You know, if you help someone, and I guarantee that they'll help you. I've seen that along the way. I've done things that people say, well, when you need them, they're not going to be there for you. But I didn't do it for that. I did because it was in my heart to do it. And right. same thing with a lot of programs I do here with the expungement, with the house, with the uh, uh, home funding, uh, COVID-19 shot. You know, whatever we do in the community, we do it because we want the people to be better. Right. Well, you you opened the door to something, so I'm going to 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 push on it a little bit, Mr. Thomas, because one of the the issues that has happened, and again, this is not something for just Yazoo City. It is something that is not only in the state of Mississippi. We see it across the country. Is that people are divided, and we're not just talking about black white. We're talking left right people. Have uh, very strong opinions about a lot of different things, especially as some of the things that we're dealing with right now during the pandemic. How do you hope, as Mayor Mr. Thomas, to be able to bring people together, and not just people who look like you or even vote for you, but people in Yazoo City? How do you hope to be able to bring people together during your term? Well, if anyone knows me, they know I love to have community events. I love to be. I love to bring the community together through activities. And we would definitely have activities throughout the the community that that would be not it would be biased, regardless of what background you come from, what's your social economic, what's your, your race. You're gonna have a village. That's my concept of everything. But we want a village where everyone respects everyone. Right. You know, no big eyes, no little no little you are still aligned for my mom. No big eye, no little you. Everybody is important as the next man. You know, I want to bring that that hub, uh, that church atmosphere. Well, everyone in the city has the same rights and privileges as the next person. We're here, and we all want the same thing: see our family and live a good quality life, have a home, a, a automobile, the American dream, the piece of that American pie. And we want to make sure that everybody. Is community have a chance at at getting a bite of the pie. The other thing you mentioned uh, and what you what you have been active in uh, is, of course, uh, when it has to do with the pandemic, something that all of us are having to live through. I mean, the other side of this is, Mr. Thomas, that that's the difference in your running for mayor this time. We are in the middle of a of not just a a statewide pandemic, but a worldwide pandemic. How have you had to to shift or pivot this campaign season versus your last campaign. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you, Cyrus. I love the, the door to door, knocking door to door, going to different houses, different communities, knocking on door, getting to meet people. But this this campaign, I really didn't do it as much as I did in the past, and I didn't for two reasons: for my safety and for the safety of the people that I come in contact with. Because if you think about it, you're going door to door, you know person to person, household to household. I didn't want to be the carrier that, you know, what's the, when folks look back and say, what's the common link? Well, Joe Thomas came by my house, and right. you got 40 people sick, you know, and, and that's the scary part of that for me. Right. Uh, but 
we still have a job to do. We still try to be visible. And like I said, I, I didn't just come up, wake up one morning a few months ago and just decide I was going to run for mayor. I've been visible. I've been working in the field, you know. And that, I, all I can do is let the work speak for itself. Yeah. You know, the economy is one of the big driving uh, factors right now for everybody, Mr. Thomas. Inflation is hurting everyone, uh, some, of course, more than others. Part of your platform has been uh, to be able to kind of rebuild and reinvest in the infrastructure there in Yazoo City. What do you want the voters to know about how you plan on doing that? You know, one of the biggest things I look at, the opportunity, is that, you know, with me being the mayor, the mayor is actually the CEO of the city. And it's my job to bring new ideas that can help advance the city. And one of the biggest projects I look forward to working at would be I would like to be the mayor that brought solar energy to the city of Yazoo. Mm-hmm. You know, Public Service Commission is public is, is a public owned utility. I mean the people of Yazoo City own public service. There's only like six or seven municipally owned public utilities in the state of Mississippi. And we happen to be one of those. And I would love to take advantage of that. One of the biggest things that we have now is that due to the high cost of fuel, our city public service no longer creates their own energy. See, now they buy energy from a third party. And a lot of you have been wondering on your light bill where this fuel charge comes from, this additional fuel charge. Well, that's where it comes from. They pass the cost of buying the energy to the customer. See, what I would like to do is, if you were watching the news, I think everybody has been watching the news. And this is what I'm going to tell you about. I've already got it written up. I'm on the third draft of the solar energy for Yazoo City. We want to we want to create our own energy, clean, green energy. You know, if you've been looking at the news, you know there's money out there for that. And like I said, we're one of only six municipally owned communities in the in state of Mississippi. So I, I believe we will qualify for a Go Green initiative where we can create our own solar or possibly nuclear energy. You know, well, well, uh, we could do it on Section 16 land where the school district would make money. Because like I stated earlier, it's hard for the school to advance when Avalurum is the determining factor in a poverty community. So we have to think of ways to make money for our school district as well. So we put it on a, on a uh, Section 16 land, the school makes money, we make money. And what I'm saying is not far-fetched for a lot of the people that under the sound of my voice because all you have to do is ride down uh, with the Morris Parkway, and you'll see that Yazoo Valley Electric has already started solar energy. You know, so those are some of the things that we can do. And according to Bloomberg, if you guys excuse me, sorry, I kind of read things like this. But according to Bloomberg, in 10 years, a 30% of a vehicle sold will be electric cars. And a municipally owned electric charging station. See, those things we have to think about the future because the future is here. Right. And, you know, when you think about it, electric charging stations, people from Anguilla, Rolling Fork, they'll probably have to come to the edge of to charge their vehicle. So those are the things that we can look at now is how can we get the things in, in place because tomorrow belongs to the people that prepare today. That's right. Well, they, that that is is something again talking about the future. Something we can start on today. I'm sure that is something people are interested in. And I want to say for those who are just tuning in, you're listening to conversations live here in your community station, WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. We're talking to Mr. Joseph Thomas Jr., who's running for mayor of Yazoo City. Talking with him not only about his platform, but also about what he wants the people of Yazoo City to know uh, about what he has to offer for them. You know, I think there are so many things that are going on in the world right now, it's very easy for people to uh, to kind of drown a lot of it out, Mr. Thomas, if it does not impact them uh, personally. One of the things that we know that everyone is concerned about, you know, is making sure that, as you said earlier, their voices are heard. You actually come from a family of, of public servants, right? I'm, I'm curious for you, what has that been like for you to, to actually see by example? I've had several conversations with individuals from Yazoo City uh, who had individuals in their families that uh, were very instrumental in the way that they kind of grew up and were molded. What has it been like for you to grow up in a family of public servants? Like I said, it, it, 
I grew up in, in politics since day one. You know, one of the, my fondest memories is watching Mike Esther when he won the uh, House of Representatives. You know, I, I was probably about 10 years old, and I was in the room when they announced that, that Mike Esther had become congressman in the state of Mississippi. I mean, Mr. Mr. Uh, James Ingram, Mr. Percy Calvin, they were the first black aldermans in the city, and they were fixtures at our home. You know, so I've always been around politics. Now, a lot of people say, well, his mama's an older woman. But you know what? I believe she'll be harder on me than she probably would be on anybody else <laughs> because my mama would demand me to, you know, to do the right thing. You know, you know how your parents are. It, right. It, it, it definitely would be a, a challenge, but I know it's a challenge. That we would want both have the same thing in our mind and our heart. And that's to help people in our community and make our community a better place for people that live here. Yeah. You know, as far as, as my dad is concerned, you know, I, I look at both my parents, and I, I'm just gonna uh, sum it up like this: My mama ran for all the women two years ago at a special election. It was nine people ran against her. Here we are, two years later, did no one run against her. She's not only offer that was unopposed, and that's because she went there and she did what she said she was going to do. And said, I was going to fall far from the tree. I look at my dad. He went to the state senate. The first time he went, you can look around. You can say, well, Martha Coker is here because it comes to the Thomas Bill. You know, and now the second time he's in, in office, you can say, well, 15th Street was done because of some of the Thomas Bill. Uh, out by the airport was done because of the Thomas Bill. Out, out of industrial drive was done because of some of the times of beer. See, I, I don't want to be one of those people that's in the office and you're there 20, 30 years and you can't see one thing that you've done. I want to be the one that if I'm not if I'm only there for a month, you can say, well, he did that. And that's that's my motivation. I want to, you know, in the Bible, say, honor thy mother and father. You, you heard the things that they've done. I want to do more and better. And I don't think I'm saying anything wrong by saying that's what I want to do. Right. Well, that brings us to the last thing I want to talk to you about then, Mr. Mr. Thomas, is as people are listening to this conversation, and I do appreciate your time. I know you have a lot that's going on right now, so we appreciate the opportunity to be able to share uh, this conversation with our, our listening audience. Accountability, that is a word that has been out there a lot now. And again, we've heard a lot when it comes to national politics, but as they say, all politics is local. Uh, what do you want the, the people of Yazoo City to know that if they give you this honor of being their mayor, about the importance of holding you accountable for what you say you want to do for them? I wouldn't want anything less. You know, and I expect, it. I expect people to, to watch every step I take, you know, because I've been, I've been an advocate in the city for over a decade. And if I see something that ain't right, I call it out. And I, I expect people to do me the same way. But you don't call it out because you're shooting at the person. You call it out because you don't think it's best for what's best for your community. And, you know, so I, I would want people to hold me accountable. And you know how you hold me accountable? Just like my mom, I just stated earlier. Two years ago, it was 10 people ran against her. If people didn't like what she was doing, I'm, I'm quite sure that it had been 10 people running against her this time. Right. That's how you hold your your, your, your lawmakers. But that's what your mayor and board are all doing. Your lawmakers. That's how you hold them accountable. And you know what, Cyrus? I also had to interject this here with the radio station. You know, it's kind of like the mayor and the board all. Doing. You know, I'm the general manager at the radio station. The general manager is basically the same thing as the mayor. See, the board tells the board come together and we decide what we're going to do with the radio station. It is my job to do the day-to-day operation and make sure that I do the job that the, the board has put before me. The same thing with, with the mayor, you know, and my mom, she, my dad, he's the chairman, my, my mom, he's the president. And like I said, I'm German, I, I do the day-to-day work. They don't, they don't have to get up and, and come to the radio station. They don't have to worry about that, because that's my job to handle that. Right. It's like the people that elect me in that position, I'm going to do what's best for them, you know what I've been blessed by where I can, I call it, I, I say it kind of funny, but I'm bilingual. 
I'm bilingual. I can speak. I can speak uh, politics, and I can speak speech. So we can kind of. <laughs> I can I can read for both of them. I can read in between the lines, and I can come back and and come back and tell tell people, you know, and show them that this is how it needs to be done, right. and and translate both ways. Because sometimes you can two people could be saying the same thing, just looking at it from different angles, and just take someone in the middle to say, hey, y'all got this. But I tell you another thing. If once I become mayor, yeah, sure. I want to make sure I want to make sure that we have recreation. That's another thing that people have been screaming for. And I, I'm not just talking about youth recreation. I mean senior citizen recreation. We want to have activities all year round for for the people of this community. Because like I said, recreation is the key to building relationships. And relationships is what's missing in our community today. We want better pick up, God pick up our community, better police protection. And things like that. We just want to improve the quality of life for the people of the United States. And I think that's something that everyone can agree about. Again, everyone, Mr. Joseph Thomas Jr. has been our guest candidate for mayor of Yazoo City, talking with us today not only about his platform, but also uh, what his hopes are for the people of Yazoo City and what he hopes to be able to bring uh, during his time as mayor as well. Mr. Thomas, really appreciate this this time today. It's glad to be able to have you back on the program. And I should let our audience know there were no no questions given to Mr. Thomas ahead of time. Uh, this is just the way we do things here for Conversations Live, and he was gracious enough to be able to answer the questions that I asked him, and I appreciate that. Mr. Thomas, how can our audience, of course, stay connected with you and continue to show their support? Well, sorry, once again, I think I'm the most visible candidate in the race. <laughs> I'm not hard to find. I'm, I'm visible every day, but 662-571-1603 is my, is my personal number. I give people because, you know, I'm on your time because I, I'm asking you to vote for me, so I should have the time to listen to, to hear what your concerns are. All right. All right, Mr. Thomas, appreciate you and looking forward to having you back on the program again, sir. Hey, Cyrus, I thank you, and you know you're the best. All right, I appreciate that, and we thank your audience for tuning in to this segment of Conversations Live.